Hey guys, Krista here. So I just want to share a quick little message that I feel like has been in my heart um, strongly. So I just want to remind all my brothers and sisters in Christ um, and to let people who aren't followers of Christ know um, how Christians should be responding to the elections and the riots that are going on and the violence and everything that's going on right now. I just want to remind all my brothers and sisters to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. The elections were crazy and to be honest, neither candidate was good and I think most people felt that way. Um, but no matter what the result of the election, don't let that get you distracted from what truly matters. Don't, um, whether you're glad that Trump won or whether you're in tears because he won, don't let that weigh you down because ultimately, the one who is in charge and the one who is our true ruler, the true ruler of this life is Jesus Christ. He, everything is according to His will. Take comfort in that. Know that. Rest in that. This whole thing, the dichotomy of choosing sides, that's Satan using the current situation to pursue his own agenda of evil. Now, I'm not saying that it, you shouldn't take a side, no matter what, you shouldn't have an opinion. It's perfectly fine, whichever candidate you wanted to win, that's your opinion. Um, what I'm saying is don't let picking a side keep you so distracted that you don't remember what your mission on this earth is, which is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, the enemy, Satan, he's real, and he's trying to keep division amongst Christians and amongst the whole world. He's distracting us from the love and mercy that can be found in Christ. Don't let him get you. Be vigilant. Be watchful of this, like, this is what the enemy is doing, this is his goal. If you put your trust in Jesus, there's no reason to fear or worry, because he is always, always faithful. I want to read two scriptures really quick. The first one is Deuteronomy 3, excuse me, Deuteronomy 31.8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be feared or dismayed. How much comfort is there in that scripture? The second one is Romans 8, 38-39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. No, nothing can separate us. No, um, no amount of craziness in the country, no amount of violence, uh, whatever, nothing can separate us. I had a friend recently text me all these, um, it was a link to all these tweets the day after the election and it was one after the other after the other of hurtful hateful harmful things and they were um just cruel things from people who were trump supporters who are glad that he won um towards people who feel like they're being targeted or some people are targeting these people who are posting those hurtful things on Twitter, those people are lost. Don't, don't, like, don't forget that. Those people are lost. And if they're Christians and they're doing that, then they need to be corrected and they're not living the way that they should. 
Um, I want to read one more thing of scripture. It's 2 Timothy 2, 23 through 26. It says, Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone. Able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Christians, don't forget the people who you believe to be sinning, or the people who are sinning, they are lost as well. Just as much as those people who are self-righteous and are racist and whatever they are, um, they're lost just as much and sinning, just as much as someone who is sinning um, in different ways. Don't forget that. Don't forget that these people need our prayer. What, what should we be doing right now as Christians with the election? The same thing that would have been if Hillary won or if anyone won. We should be praying. We should be vigilantly praying for our country. But most importantly, we should be praying for souls to be saved. We need to be going out and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with people. He's the only one who can save this country. Or, you know, even if this country doesn't get saved and we all end up in a post-apocalyptic, weird movie thing, um, Christ is the only one who can save us. So, lastly, I just want to mention there's a story in John about an adulteress who's brought before Jesus. And the leaders of the time come to Jesus and they ask, what should we do with this woman? He says, his response is, let anyone who's without sin be the first one to throw a stone at her. They want to stone her to death, throwing rocks at her to death. So, as expected, no one throws a stone because we are all sinners in need of a savior. Um, the woman, Jesus asked the woman who was there to condemn her and she said, no one. He said, he said that he didn't condemn her either. And then he said, now go, turn away from your sin. That's the key, guys. It's not just, we need, to, we need to love these people and share the gospel with them. We need to, to lovingly guide them and correct them. Like it said in 2 Timothy, Timothy, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Um, some people are going to let their humanness get in the way and get the best of them. But with all the craziness, the division, the anger, and hurt that's going on in our country right now, this, in 2 Timothy, what is talking about, correcting your opponent with gentleness, don't getting involved in these quarrels, that's how a Christian should be living. That should be your goal. That's my goal. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.